welcome to the metal voice today on the show we're talking about carrie king's new album from hell i rise that will be released may 17th um Karen, what's going on? And I'm looking forward to spending a little time with you. I don't know if we're going to go track by track, but we'll try and give everybody a flavor of the new Carrie King record with, of course, Mark Azagata of uh, Death Angel uh, on vocals. And uh, let everyone know what we think so you can try before you buy. So here's the breakdown of his band. Like you mentioned, Carrie King on guitars, obviously. Uh, Marcus Osigueta is on vocals from Death Angel. We have... Demel, that's what, uh, from uh, Machine Head. You have Kyle Sanders from Hell Yeah. And uh, on drums, Paul Bostoff, who is also from Slayer and so many other bands in his past, right? Yeah. Um, it's a great lineup. Uh, we're talking about these guys are experienced musicians, right, who are playing. This is not some sort of, he picks some sort of unknowns. These are some serious, serious musicians who've been around the block. Yeah, it's a it's a thrash dream team in a way, right? It's it's yeah. uh, it obviously, you know. I'll personally say having Mark on vocals yeah. uh, instantly piqued my curiosity because I'm a big Death Angel fan. Yeah. I think Tom Araya and Slayer will be the first one to tell you he's not a vocalist, and I think a lot of people would consider Mark more of a vocalist. So it's interesting to see what Carrie would do with someone who's regarded as more of a singer. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Paul on drums is kind of that familiar partner uh, for Carrie. Uh, Phil has been in, 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 in the thrash San Francisco world uh, for the longest time. And I guess Kyle Saunders might be the one that people know a little bit less, but he's, he's from Hell Yeah. And he's actually the brother of yeah. Troy Saunders from Mastodon, which yeah. might be why uh, when they do their first actual tour coming up this fall, uh, the bill is going to be Lamb of God, Mastodon. Uh, Kerry King, uh, and I, I think it'll be an opener as well. People are super excited because first we got the announcement that Kerry King is going to finally release his long-awaited solo album that he's been sort of, I guess, the past 10 years working on because there was no more Slayer at the time. And yeah. then right after he announces the album going to be released and the show dates that he's going to play or the festivals he's going to play, then you got, wait a second, Slayer's back, and they're going to do a couple of reunion shows here and there. I don't know if that was orchestrated. I don't know if that was sort of, you know what? I I would think it's more in the orchestrated and planned versus this spontaneous, because you just don't get dates yeah. for festivals. And these are things you have to plan ahead. And people yeah, and let, let's, let's be honest. Both of you have been doing this uh, a fair amount of time. You know, it, it's a perfect storm in the sense that Carrie had just put out his new single and announced his new band at the time. So there was buzz around that, which kind of generates some buzz for the Slayer dates. But then the Slayer dates also generate some buzz for Carrie's project. Because in every yeah. press release, you know, one mentions the other. In every article, one mentions the other. So, hey, it's a smart thing. You know, launching a new band, even if you're Carrie King in 2024 isn't always the easiest or most lucrative venture. So it's great to know that, hey, you know, we've got these Slayer shows. And I, I said to you, it's kind of like a Twisted Sister thing. They're not going on tour and doing 50, 60, 70 dates together. Yeah. I can certainly see where they're going to do 8 to 10 really well-paying, top-of-the-bill festival dates every year. And that can finance any project any of them wants to do, whether that right. project is like this, a Carrie King album, or whether it's putting an extension on your house. Whatever you want to do with that Slayer money is fair for you to do. So, yeah, I think it was orchestrated. And uh, like we say in French, uh, I really think, you know, one kind of helps the other. So it'll be interesting to see the boost that Kerry gets and how Slayer does on the festival circuit. Look, the reality is Slayer retired too early. They just, just they still had enough energy there, but of course... Some members said, you know what, I had enough. But maybe after spending, you know, a few years sort of sitting on the balcony drinking lemonade, you kind of say, you know what, I kind of miss music. I kind of miss playing live. And it's good. It's good. You know, it's it's in their blood. You, you can only paint it. the fence so many times, right? You can only paint the fence so many times. All right, let's get to this album. Um, we could talk about, we can do comparisons, right? Because people don't know what to expect. They heard the first single. Sounds kind of Slayer-ish, kind of sounds Death Angel-ish, right? And we're getting those two flavors. Plus, Paul Bostoff is the drummer who was the drummer of Slayer 
at the time that they decided to disband. So there's a lot of elements there. There's a lot of thrash. There's a lot of speed. There's a lot of brutality. So let's just talk about comparing Death Angel to Slayer to this project. Because that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Well, it's funny that you would say that because the first note on my trusty set of notes here, people, since he's Carrie King, I do take notes. It's very nice. So my first note is, if Slayer and Death Angel had a baby, dot, dot, dot. So, so folks, uh, I will say to you, uh, if Slayer, particularly Latter-day Slayer, with a tinge of the old, and Death Angel, particularly Latter-day Death Angel, after the reunion, had a baby, that's what this album is. So if you like what you've heard from Slayer on the last several albums with a hint of the old stuff, and if you like what Death Angel has been since they've reunited, so Humanicide, The Evil Divide, uh, all of those albums, you know, it's, it's not, I won't say it's old school, it's not Act 3 sounding and that kind of stuff, but Latter-day Slayer, Latter-day Death Angel, if those two had a baby, that's what this album is. There, there is no peeling the onion here, people. Uh, if you like getting what you expect out of an album, I think this is what a lot, peop- a lot of people were expecting and probably hoping for. You know what, Perrin? I was listening to the uh, Slayer catalog and I was listening to the Death Angel catalog and trying to make some connections. I agree with you 100%. This is Latter-day Death Angel. Definitely. The, his, the way he's singing, very similar to Death Angel. Very aggressive in your face and relentless. That's the word, relentless. Marco Sigueda is relentless on this album. Whereas, I would say it's a mix between old Slayer and new Slayer. It's it's new Slayer in production, but it's old Slayer in terms of uh, maybe lyrical content in a sense, rebellion, aggression, um, oppression. You know, yeah. there's all those, those themes that run in Slayer, you know, uh, Maybe not so the first two albums, but more of the oppressed, the rebellious, the we're starting a revolution. Very political and social, but vague enough so you don't know who they're talking about, really. Yeah, and I'll also say that after Seasons in the Abyss, where for the first time Slayer gave us some, I won't say slow or laid back, but some mid-tempo kind of rockier, rockier songs, everything after that album, pretty much everything was... Boom, 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 boom. Very heavy, yeah. song after song. Yeah, yeah. This is that. You know, I, another note I took was that for this album, everything is either super fast or fast. And it's either super heavy or heavy. There's a, maybe a laid back moment here or there. But if, if I take the song Seasons in the Abyss as one of, Se- uh, of Slayer's kind yeah. of more relaxed songs, mm-hmm. there's actually no song that's like that all the way through. Everything is either either super fast and heavy or fast and heavy. So if you like your music fast and you like your music heavy, this this might be the album of the year for you because for about 48 minutes, this thing starts and it does not let up. You know, and, and, and exactly what you're, to what you're saying right now is that this is a live album. So in a sense that if you want to go a mosh pit in a circle, you want to do that wall of death, this is the album for you. I think this will come across better live than it does in studio. Not to say that it's bad in studio, but I'm just saying it'll sound a lot better live. People will be mosh pitting. The people are stage diving. This is all there for you. Everything you want to do, it's very tribal in beat. Yeah. And there's and at a live, if, if this is what, I, I don't know what they're going to do live. I don't know. Are they going to throw in a Slayer song at the end? Are they going to throw in a Death Angel song at the end? Or are they just going to do songs from this record? But regardless... Again, if they're going to do a 45-minute opening set, I could see this being a very intense 45-minute opening set. I could see it, you know, this is going to be summer, early fall. People are going to come out of that mosh pit sweaty. People are going to come out of that mosh pit hurt. And yeah. people are going to come out of that mosh pit out of breath because there's not going to be a moment where, like I said, where there's going to be a song like Season of the Abyss where the mosh pit kind of stops and everyone kind of kind of just sways and watches. <sighs> This is going to be boom, 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 boom. A lot of sweat. A lot of sweat. Because that's what this record is. That's what this record is. So so I'm going to point towards the production in the Death Angel direction. It's got more of a Death Angel production than it has a Slayer production. Slayer production historically have been less reverb, more raw, more brutal. 
Whereas Death Angel has seemed to be a bigger thrash production. So I think production wise, it falls more on the Death Angel side. But musicianship wise, it falls more into the Slayer category. So that's where the two worlds sort of combine. Yeah, I look, you know, one thing I'll say, I agree with you on the production. It's a good thing. Like, I'm glad Slayer didn't split. And I'm glad we don't have like Slayer and Carrie King. And I'll say this Slayer, you know, Tom is probably really happy about that too, because Carrie took the ident identity. This is a continuation of Slayer musically. Yeah, yeah so it is. I couldn't see, like, how could Slayer and Carrie King exist separately? Because this just sounds so much like if Slayer was going to do a next album. Like, folks, the way Carrie plays is the way Carrie plays. That's and it's, right. It's, it's, That's right. It sounds like Slayer. And, and the way Mark sings is the way Mark sings. Like, mm -hmm. another note I took after the one about if Slayer and Death Angel had a baby. This also sounds like Mark singing for Slayer, but it yeah. also sounds as if Carrie would have guested on a on song a or two on a Latter day Death Angel album. So it, it's really funny. Like, we talk about bands like ACDC or Saxon or anybody or Accept who kind of give us kind of the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. And a few people are upset about that, but for the most part are like, yeah, good old consistent ACDC, good old consistent Saxon, good old consistent Accept. Frankly, if I'm a Slayer fan, I'm like, good old consistent Carrie. Yeah. If I'm more of a Death Angel fan, I'm like, hey, good old consistent Mark. Yeah. This is, you know, I, I think people, like if anyone is waiting for a surprise here, there ain't no surprise. <laughs> there, ain't there ain't no, no surprise. surprise. This is this is the album you've been expecting. So I'll say that to everyone. I, I'll yeah. also put that step one step further. I'll say that first single is the rest of the album, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And, and and guys, that's not to say that every song is exactly the same. You know, the, the cadence will change a little bit. The tempo will change a little bit. The subject matter will change a little bit. But yeah, you know, and that's a good point, Jimmy, because we get a lot of albums these days where we hear the first single. Maybe we like it, maybe we don't. We hear the second single, maybe we like it, maybe we don't. But then we hear the album and we're like, well, these singles aren't really like the entire album. Like, why did you know? Why did you show me the best scene in the movie, but not mm -hmm. really what the whole movie's like? No, if you like that first single was Idle Hands, if you liked Idle yeah. Hands, you're going to like the record. It's as simple as that. I will yeah. flat out put it there. If you like Idle Hands, you will like this record. If you do yeah. not like Idle Hands, you will not like this record. Very simple. All right, let's just go into some songs that we liked. We're not going to go through them all because, as you mentioned, it's every song, the whole album has a certain vibe to it and they kind of represent, each song sort of represents the whole yeah. album. In a sense, and right? guys, honestly, right. If we did a track by track review of this, we could, but it'd be doing like a track by track review of an ACDC album where yeah. where the songs are just kind of similar, you know? And, and again, this isn't uh, a diss to the album because I quite like the album. Uh, it's just that, the song, you know, you can only say it's a, it's a banger so many times, right? You can only say it's a fast, heavy one so many times. But, you know, I'm sure like you, Jimmy, like for there were several who stood out above the pack for me. So we can definitely talk yeah. about those. I, I liked Residue. Okay, well, just so everybody knows, Diablo, the first track is just an instrumental. It's just a build up for the album. Um, Residue is one of the songs that I really d dug, you know, because it's got this super gro nice groove. It's got a nice melody. It's aggressive, but it's mid-paced. And, you know, what Slayer always does is these little guitar break harmonies. They're just little, little, small, little guitar break harmonies. Reminds me of South of Heaven by Slayer. It could have come off that album. But, of course, with Marcus Osigueta singing. And you know what? One thing I liked about Residue, Residue wasn't on my top list, but I like everything. In the intro of Residue, there's this kind of intro that I thought was a bit like Voivod's Tribal Convictions. And yes. That was actually one of the rare things on the album that was different than everything else. Like most of the songs start with some pretty fast, aggressive guitar, but there was kind of a bit of a drum intro on Residue yeah. that my mind went to Tribal Convictions from, from Voivod. So I thought that was actually quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, Trophies well, of the Tyrant, I guess we both thought that was a great track. Yeah. Uh, again, to me, it's a ring in blood I don't know, sound or vibe from Slayer. Another mid-paced, groovy track. There are no back vocals on this album. Just let's be clear. There are no keyboards. There's no back vocals, no nothing. It's just punk, thrash, speed, and aggression. That's what you're yeah. getting. But Trophies of the Tarrant, I liked it because it has a very vague lyrical message. You know, Trophies of the Tarrant, right? Uh, it, it, it's very political. It's a very social, but it's not 
It's written so well, the lyrics, where you don't know who they're talking about, but you know they're talking about someone. Let me give you a couple. So the album opener, because there's an intro, but the album opener is called Where I Reign. Yeah. And yeah. I loved that one because I thought, let's say I hadn't heard Idle Hands before. Idle Hands is on my top of the album list too. But Where I Reign was in there because if I hadn't heard this before and this is how the album kicks off, talk about a grab you by the throat kind of, whoa, I, I really like this. That's what this song is. So Where I Reign is a great way to kick off a record. It's a, probably going to be a great way to kick off a show because grabs you by the throat, gets the mosh pit going. Uh, that's what Where I Reign is. I just want to say something. Idle Hands to me, just to tell everybody out there, was sort of, it's a great track, but for me personally, it wasn't my favorite track on the album. So for those of you who are going to get who are getting excited about this album, there are better songs, what I'm trying to say. There are much better songs in the album than Idle Hands. Yeah, look, it's on for my me. list, for though. Me. I, for I, me. I, I think it's on the top. I think it's in the top half of the record. I think there's 12 songs on the record and an intro. Mm -hmm. Idle Hands would definitely be in my top half. Another one I really liked. There's a minute and a half for a minute, 45 minute song on here yeah, called yeah. Everything I Hate About You. That is just punky and brutal and just, I couldn't believe how short it was, but man, mosh pit heaven. So everything I hate about you, I, I don't even know if I can list it as one of my favorite songs because it's so short, but it's, it's, it's longer than kind of an intro. It's not really an intro to anything. That's a minute and 48 second song. It just is this pure aggression all the way Post, through. Post-mortem, that's the speed on Ring yeah. and Blood, if you yeah, remember that song. Time. Yeah. And then... Uh, Go ahead. Crucifixation. Crucifixation yeah, awesome. was something interesting. Again, title, play on words, interesting subject matter. And I, I like that one because it, it started and ended fast, but we kind of had this kind of a breakdown in the middle where, you know, again, Slayer isn't really known or Death Angel isn't known for time changes necessarily, but we got a little bit of a time change and they did something, you know, for as similar as this album is all the way through, I kind of appreciate the songs where within a song, maybe there's a curveball for 30 or 45 seconds. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. fixation was something I liked a lot as well. I'm going to go to Toxic because I, I love that. There's a line that says, forcing opinions on others. So that's kind of like the theme. They don't like people forcing their opinions on others. But again, it's vague enough. So you don't know what they're talking about, but it's rebellious enough to really have that. that that's Slayer. It's all about attitude Slayer. That's why people love Slayer. It's this sort of like aggressive attitude of, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to be rebellious and leave me alone and screw you. And Stick it to the man. And correct me if I'm wrong, was there an actual groove in Toxic? Because I actually thought I heard a groove here. Because, again, there, there are a few the grooves. grooviest album. Uh, and I thought I heard a groove. And what the groove reminded me of, I don't know if anyone knows the Public Enemy song, uh, Channel Zero. Uh, and Channel Zero has a Slayer guitar sample in the song. And I hear that in parts of this song. And, again, you know, we're talking the Public Enemy. We're talking a little, there's a groove. So... And again, I'm not shocked that there are a, a groovy moment here and there on the record because Death Angel, as much as they're a thrash band, if Mark had any say in this, Death Angel does kind of swing and groove a little bit. And there is a, well, well, it's there. got there's a tribal beat, right? Um, yeah. That happens with that's how people mosh to this tribal beat. Yeah. You know, like there's a tribal beat, and this whole album has that tribal beat ish. Yeah. Kind of thing. Honestly, think about this tour. Are people going to have any energy left for Mastodon and for yeah, Lamb yeah, of God? Yeah. This, this, this is a lot of sweat here. There's a lot yeah. of sweat you know, going on here. A lot of uh... hats off to those bands for letting Carrie and his band open for them because, you know, I could see this being a band that if you're the least bit insecure about your live show, you're not going to want these guys open for you because trust me, the crowd is going to expend a lot of energy when they see these guys live. You know, uh, another great song is Tension. You know, it's very uh, dynamic. It's got a nice buildup, uh, a nice drum pattern, which, you know, it's creepy Slayer song. You know, it's yeah. definitely a Slayer riff there. I put the famous Perrin star next to that one. So I, I, I put a star next to Tension. And I like Tension. Spoken word kind of intro. So we do get yeah. a few intros from Mark. A, a, a little a nod word. to Megadeth and Dave Mustaine intro. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I called the, ref, the, the riff in there was kind of, this hip, hypnotic and repetitive, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, it's like and, tension. It's tension's yeah. building. Tension's yeah. building. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. So here, here we are saying we're not going to go song by song, but you and I have kind of name checked a whole bunch of songs. 
And you know, sometimes when you do this, you'll say, okay, what didn't you like? Like, there's no bad songs for me. There's, there's definitely songs that I said I have a star next to and I like them better mm-hmm. than others. But again, like an ACDC record, like a Saxon record, there's probably stuff you're going to like and there's stuff you're going to like more. But I don't yeah. think you're going to be like, you know, there's no reggae song on the album. There's no like weird left turn on the album. I don't, there's nothing I don't like. It's, it's solid, 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 solid. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, just overall, um, I would say that this is definitely a grower. Uh, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of aggression. So your body needs or your brain needs time to process all this, right? Because on first listen, you're saying, holy shit, it feels like one big song. But as, with multiple listens, you start saying, oh, okay, there's where the melody is. There's where the groove is. Oh, yeah, I get that. And I get this. You need a little time to sit with this album to truly absorb it all. And yeah. uh, and I find that the more I've listened to it, the more I've liked it over time. And the more I got the melody and I get the gist of it. For Slayer fans, they're going to love this because it's a continuation of Slayer, like you mentioned. For Death Angel fans, they're going to love it because it's very similar to Death Angel. And for the power metal fans, probably not because there's no big choruses, there's no symphonies, there's no yeah. big back, there's, there's back no vocals. Gang, there's no gang vocals. Like there's you no said. gang vocals. No so this is uh, this is there's two guitars, a vocalist, a drummer, and a bassist. That's all you're getting here, and that's very Slayer like, you know. Yeah. Look, Carrie. Anyone who knows anything about Carrie, Carrie is very steadfast in his beliefs, musical and otherwise. And I think this is just an example. I, I would think Carrie King's name is on this. So the direction starts with him. And for a person who's very steadfast, this is a very steadfast record. This is, yeah, this yeah, is I agree. King. I, I don't want to give this out. I don't want to give this album a rating out of 10. I don't. I want to just say that it's a very good album. And people who love Slayer, like I said, people who love Death Angel will love it. The power metal fan people, they probably didn't like Slayer to begin with. It's not going to cross over into other genres. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going to, it's going to, the love of thrash, the love of death metal, the love of aggressive music. Those are the people who are going to gravitate toward this album. And it's not going to go into the prog rock people's world. It's not going to go into, I don't know, the softer ballady kind of metal bands. No, it's not going to go there. Look, Slayer filled a void in certain people's lives. Slayer was a, is a Slayer's a niche band, right? Slayer's a niche band. That got that, that got a little bit bigger than you would have thought they might have, you know? This fills that niche. That fills if there's been a void that's been gone since Slayer went away the last few years, this fills that void. And folks, listen to this when you work out in the gym. Work out to this, uh, listen to this when you're driving. Maybe if you're in the library doing your homework, don't have this on the headphones. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like, it's like, I, I, again, it's, you almost need to be in a mood to listen to this. You know, you need to be in a mood. From Hell I Rise is full of attitude. And it's a continuation of where Slayer left off. And you just with, reminded me of the with cover Death record. Angel. It was undisputed <laughs> attitude. So just the, the Slayer cover of, of record of punk covers was undisputed attitude. On that note, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. Parent, thank you very much for contributing. And uh, have yourself a wonderful day. Pick it up. It's a good record, people. See you soon.